Hello, welcome to this video tutorial for DT Register 2.7 Field Management. This video is based on version 2.7.0 and we will be covering uh, some of the field types of the fields that you can create. Uh, there was already a video tutorial that hopefully you've watched uh, just on general field usage and how to set them up and enable them in your events. Uh, so this video we will cover creating fields of uh, of the input type uh, being like text fields, text area fields, email, so forth, so on, and then uh, the selection fields will be covered in a separate video. Um, so here's you look at the fields you can see the field type does show here um, in this column. Let's go ahead and create a new field <clears throat> which you can do as a starting from scratch or you can copy a field if there's a field that's similar to what you want to do, you can select it, then hit copy field, and then go from there. But for now, we're just going to create a new field. Uh, the name of the field is uh, what's stored in the database. This is not what is displayed anywhere. Um, so this has to be a unique name. So I'll just call it uh, testing input, and uh, it'll check to make sure that your name is okay. Uh, side note, there's helpful tool tips over here on the side that uh, will give you good information on what you're supposed to do for for that particular setting. Pay attention to those as they are actual uh, info that will help make sure that you get things set correctly. Here's the email tag. Every field has the ability now to specify its own email tag. So you can use this tag to insert the data from this specific field in any of your emails and um, you know as the tags are input with the brackets here you do not include the brackets as stated uh, as stated in the tooltip so here I'll just put testing input that'll be my tag and I don't put the brackets on it now I go to the field type um, here you can see the various field types let's just make a text field and the size, this is how, how big the field is going to be. Let's just go with uh, 30. Maximum length, this is how many characters can be typed in the field. So let's say 40. Even though the field is bigger than that, I want to allow you to be able to type a little more. But you can limit uh, how many characters are accepted, which is recommended to do that. Um, the label, this is what will show on the form. There you go. Uh, conditional field. Uh, <clears throat> you can set up this field to be based on another field, um, meaning based on the selection of another field, you can have this field show up. That is covered in a separate video, so look for the conditional fields video tutorial for more information on that. So I'm going to skip that for right now. Description is what will show on the front end as a tooltip. Similar to what you see here, uh, you can have that on the front end of your site to show information if you do not enter anything here in the description, then you will not have a tooltip. Um, so if you don't need one, then just leave this blank. Okay. Publish or not, if you want the field to be visible or not. Uh, apply change fee. This is a new feature where previously, um, whenever you... Uh, if you use the front-end user panel where users can come and make changes, cancellations, and so forth, um, you could set up a, a change fee, and previously, uh, previous versions of DT Register would apply. If you made any change at all, you would get the change fee. Now here you can specify if changes are made to this field, will there be a change fee or not? Uh, of course, if there's no change fee set up for the event that is being used on, it doesn't matter, but... Um, if the event does have a change fee, I could say, you know, if somebody makes a change to this field, they don't need to pay a fee. Um, so you can specify that per field now. Uh, hidden. A hidden field basically means it's an admin only, like an office only type of field. So it'll be, uh, it'll not be shown on your front end registration forms. It'll only be seen in the back end by an administrator. So uh, you could have that field, and it could be any field type, and maybe you want to use it to give seat numbers or make notes about a payment, 
uh, whatever you want to do that's what a hidden field would be for listing options this gives you a couple options for display the front end attendees list that is uh, if you go to an attendees list similar to to this um, you will see a list of people that are registering for your event uh, and, uh, and I'll show whatever information you have configured well here you can specify if this field is going to be shown in that attendees list or not uh, so if it is uh, if you check this box then when somebody views any attendees list data for this field will be included and then the back end members list if you do a group registration a detailed group registration where it pulls in data for each member of the group um, on the back end records area there will be a uh, a column that will say something like four members that is stating that that record has four members in it. When you click that link it will then display um, all of the members and then within that display uh, previously there was a hard-coded list of, of fields that would show uh, but if you didn't happen to use those fields for group registration then it was difficult to manage. Um, so now you can control that you just check uh, check the field here and with that that will cause this field to be used when it displays all the members of any particular group registration uh, so that's what that check is for so you can specify those things default settings these are what is going to be uh, applied <clears throat> uh, for for this particular field whenever um, whenever it's loaded into an event by default uh, when you go to create an event, all the fields are set to default. So um, this will say how it's going to be used. Uh, and when you're creating the new event, if you mark all events, then that means this event or this field will be enabled for all of your current, uh, currently running events uh, instead of having to create the event and then go turn it on uh, event by event. Uh, so then here, you can set the default setting to be um, as far as how is it going to be used. Is it going to be used at all? Or is it going to be used in individual registrations, group registrations, or both? Uh, is the field going to be required? Uh, in a group registration, is it going to be shown for every member, for the billing page only, or members and billing? So you can set these items, and these are things that will be set within each event, but this is the default starting point for this field. So we could save that and be done with that and now uh, you'll see we got the new input field here that we just created uh, of course we can order it however we want to combine with the other fields I'm going to go back into this field and let's check some of the other options if I change this to a text area you'll see my field options change now um, I have a show character count yes or no and the show character count what this will do below your text area box and if you don't know text area box looks something like what you see here it's a, a larger input box and um, you can have DT register count how many characters are being typed into the box like you see on a lot of other registration forms um, reason being is you do have the ability to calculate a fee based on how many characters somebody types into your form so and if you're going to do that then it would be helpful to um, show them that character count and if you do make it a fee field um, then you can see here in the tooltip it does give you a, a a pretty detailed breakdown of how to how to show it um, you will give a dollar amount for each uh, character level so here as you see in the tooltip as an example uh, to add ten dollars for typing up to 100 characters you would enter 100 equals 10 and um, that would mean up to 100 characters is going to be charged $10 once you go beyond that then you have the the next price level and you can set up various prices um, as seen here in the tooltip rows is how how tall the box is how many rows it, it goes uh, columns is how wide the box is so you can enter a number here to specify the size of your text area box and the rest of the settings here are all the same as what we have just described.
Let's go to another field type. Let's go to a date field. This is another input option. Uh, here you have a date format. Uh, so you can specify what format the date will display in after it's been selected. And what the date field will do, it'll, it'll put an input box on the form and it'll have a little calendar icon for the user to click and it give, pulls up a little calendar icon picker thing. <laughs> and then the user can click on the date and it enters it into the, into the field in this spe specified format. Uh, which will be a lot better than just having somebody type it in and it not be the same. Okay, and then um, all the rest of this again is the same. Now if I change this uh, textual, textual is not an actual input field. It is just text that displays on the screen. And uh, the way this works is you have um, your regular items here at the top, but then you have text and uh, here's where you can type in what you want to display. This can be instructions uh, to place in a specific spot in your form, maybe to describe the fields below. Uh, maybe you want to use it to make a header, because uh, you can put in HTML. So um, maybe you want to make a header, and you want to add some HTML. So you're going to um, make it an H3 uh, for the sake of you know, pulling in that, that kind of styling, something like that you can do, uh, whatever you want to do on the textual field, um, but it will display in the full width of your registration form and you can order it wherever you need it to be. Display on the confirmation page, this is a textual field only type setting. Um, some people want this textual field to display on their confirmation page, some do not. Now you have the option to say for each textual field if you want it to be displayed on confirmation or not. Um, other item, upload field. Here you can provide a, a field where a user can browse their computer and upload a file during registration. Um, here you have, uh, you can specify a maximum file size which is in kilobytes as stated in the tooltip. You would just enter a number here, you would not enter the KB, just a number. Accepted file types. This would be a comma separated list of, of file types like PDF, uh, JPEG, whatever you want to do. You could have people upload um, documents that are needed. They could upload a picture of themselves, uh, whatever you need to be done. Then uh, those in files or images that are uploaded will be stored in the core Joomla images folder. There's a DT register folder that's created on install inside there there's an uploads folder that's where the files are stored uh, here you do have the choice to say attach uploaded files to the admin notification email so if you mark this as yes you will get that file as an email attachment when you get notified of the registration uh, last one to show you here is an email field type uh, which uh, is an input field but it expects to be expects you to enter an email format but then you also have the option of saying if you want a confirmation field or not. If you mark yes, then it will automatically add a second field below it. So you have your email field, then the confirmation field where the user will enter it a second time, and the two will have to be the same, like you see on, on a lot of forms. Uh, so those are your, your standard input type fields. The other fields, uh, like drop-downs and so forth, get a little, uh, little more complex. Those are covered in another video, so make sure you check that out for more information on that. If you need further assistance, uh, feel free to log a support ticket or find us in the forums. Thanks a lot.